Hello and welcome to what the title wrong initially. Sorry about the very delayed start. I guess I was talking to my bankruptcy lawyer on how to handle my finances tomorrow with all the bankruptcy going on in my account tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, that's what SGX Nifty at least is telling me. So let's see. So as we speak, SGX Nifty is at seventeen uh, three hundred. Going to be a very long dark night, I suppose. Uh, but uh, anyway, let's go back to yesterday to yesterday's analysis and get started in earnest with Calagra market. Uh, oh, now it is saying start trading SGX Nifty at nine thousand per lot. I don't know what is this. I don't think this is legit. Every time we have a conversation like this, NSE objects. So the first and most important chart yesterday when we were closing the analysis, we had said that. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll change the name. Sorry, the name is wrong. It is uh, for 17th March, not 16th month. Yesterday we said if today's open happens above yesterday's close, then it will go up to 200 DMA, right? That was our parting shot. Basically, we said ki we are not sure if this, this is below the channel, into this channel, or it is above the channel. Is it like at the top of the channel, or did it go into this? So our simple algo was, dekho, aaj, if it opens above yesterday's close right then it is out of the channel and it will go up all the way to 200 dma and if it is open below yesterday's uh, uh, close and consolidates and closes there then it is very clear that it is going to go down back into the channel so but today morning itself we were very clear that yahape it has opened above the thing and now what was left to play for is the move till 200 dma which has happened right so uh, actually pretty straightforward market to trade if you ask me because it opened here that gave you a clear idea that uh, it is going to go up now the other thing you could have done is you could have waited your entry till here because if you see it here right it almost came back to the uh, demand sorry this gap ka window ka supply zone, supply zone sorry demand zone and then it bounced back so 200 dma done that is a big headline and now we have to but then yesterday in the final you know uh, analysis we also said that it's better not to trade because today there's an FOMC interest rate decision F F event right so this was um, this was our final this thing we thought it's back in the downward channel but we had said that look if uh, it opens above if it opens above yesterday's close then it is not the case and we ended it there so now let's see what it is doing today it broke the channel it's above 200 DMA, also SGS Nifty is 275 points above. Uh, Manish is saying beers are so dead. So yeah, I think, I think yeah, tomorrow my plan is to go find a lawyer and file for bankruptcy and think of how to fund college education for children, etc. <laughs> anyway, so, so uh, it broke the channel. It said the 200 DMA, FOMC is awaited. So like all, for all you know, SGS Nifty is up and all that is fine. But, you know, there is nothing about the data which says that tomorrow is going to be some blockbuster day. There is something in the chart which tells tomorrow is a blockbuster day. That is that it is above the supply zone. It broke this channel. It is going up above and all that. But there is also a contra evidence. That is if you take this trend line and this 200 DMA, it is below the 200 DMA. Is uh, enough material for you to not jump on to this long trade so there is an event there is a resistance at a 200 dma there's this trend line but on the opposite side there is also this channel breaking and the supply zone sorry this gap getting filled and broken over so it's it's very conflicting for me uh i would say 70 30 in favor of bulls but fomc event is evaded i don't want to you know get into this bhavishya only business we'll see when it happens tomorrow right and if it goes about 200 dma we can see an upside all the way perhaps till 17800 zone like i mean if it breaks 200 dma tomorrow then we'll see quite a bit of upside in the market that's almost like let's say another probably 600 points till 17600 right so that is the headline so if it breaks tomorrow we can be in for another very clean bull run but till that point we have to be careful now let us look at other data points the most important being option chain right so one second let me just go to option chain option chain today everybody sold uh, puts and a lot of calls were unbound but this option chain honestly right looking at this option chain there's nothing about this option chain that says 
uh, nifty is bullish because pcr is neutral 17800 has a huge resistance but if 17800 breaks of course then there is no resistance anywhere till 17400 so if 17000 breaks we can see a rally all the way to 17300 or 400 perhaps because that is where the first significant OI is coming in op open option chain right um but 17,000, like, see, it's easy to say that hey, SGX Nifty upar hai, kal upar jayega and all, but that is cheating, right? Because today at 3.30, we couldn't have done this analysis looking at SGX Nifty. And we have to assume that, look, we are going to analyze whatever we have today at 3.30, right? And we have to learn how to analyze at today 3.30. So today 3.30, if you looked at this option chain, there is nothing which told you that market is going to cross 17,000. And... If it crosses 17,000, we know that it can go all the way to 7,400 based on this option chain, right? So, I'm going to say that 17,000 is a resistance according to option chain because today at 3.30, I don't know SGX Nifty. But I'll also say that SGX is at 17,300. But that is not available at 3.30. And let us face it, after FOMC, who knows what? Because 7300, 17250 is just a percent and a half away from, you know, if a bad interest rate decision come, it can easily go a percent and a half down. PCR is at 0 0.8, which is kind of neutral. FIA option data should be very interesting today. Yeah, this is very, very telling. So FIA bought 42,000 calls today. And suddenly you can see the gap has closed between calls and puts. They bought 2,000 crore futures and for the first time after ages, FII bought stocks today. So, this is yesterday's. So, bought calls in huge quantum, 40,000 calls. Futures data is 2,000 CR by 300 CR by I don't know how FIS will feel about having missed the whole rally. Sorry. It's kind of uh, very weird because retail, it seems, won over FIS in the last few days. Uh, no, it's too early to say anything. Let's not make conclusions like that. And so, and finally, the verdict is FOMC decision. If Nifty consolidates above 200 DMA, we can see much more upside. Maybe 17,800 levels. Or let me just double check that. Is it? Yeah, this is 17,630. Yeah, 17,700 17, levels can happen if it consoles, consolidates above 200 DMA, right? Finally, trades, uh, no trades because we uh, thought even gambling ho gaya kal. So, wait and watch 200 DMA. Now, let's look at uh, Bank Nifty quickly. Bank Nifty is again very interesting. It seems like it has got back into this above the trend line. So, here's the thing, right? If this stays above this level, it can go significantly higher. Now, 200 DMA, 100 DMA, all of that can happen if it stays above this channel. If tomorrow opens below this channel, then it can be very tricky. We can see down move all the way to, like, you know, basically, it's a make or break moment. As of now, it seems like Bank Nifty has gone back inside the channel. We can also confirm here. My only problem today is today, although it has gone back into the channel, it has happened on relatively low volume. So I want to wait and watch. So tomorrow, if there's a gap up open, we can be fairly sure that it has re-entered this trend line and it will go further up. Right. But in the absence of that, and let me just draw the other system. And I'll just make this one also bolder. Yeah, it looks like it has gone back into it. But if it does, if it does not stay here, then there is downside. If it consolidates here, there is upside all the way to probably 38,200, 300 odd levels. 38,500 levels maybe depending on which day it happens. So this is Bank Nifty Read finally going to USD INR. 
Now, USD NR, yesterday we parted by saying that if it goes back into this channel, it can go down. If it is above this channel, it can go up. Now, the catch is today it seems like it has dipped back into the channel. Now, if tomorrow we again see a gap down open, we can see dollar going all the way back to 75-20 odd levels. If this stays within this channel, right? But if it does not, so I'll just make this a little correct, yeah. If this channel plays out, then this is the next step. But if it this if, if it again opens above today's closing level, so today's closing level was somewhere over here. Now let's say it opens tomorrow at 76.50 or something levels, then we can probably again see USD INR consolidating towards an upward breakout. So long story short, USD INR seems like it has dipped back into the channel today. But and today evening, by looking at this, you should have shorted this. But tomorrow is an event again. FOMC has a huge bearing on uh, currencies, perhaps more than equities at times. So I wouldn't recommend taking a trade on USDNR before an event. But after the event tomorrow, if the trend is clear that it is going down, then tomorrow, whenever dollar bounces and gives you an uptick, you can short dollar maybe for a target all the way here. Uh, but as of now, it is not definitely a buy because it has re-entered this channel. Now let me quickly see what audience is saying. Kunal is saying earn money from YouTube and lose in markets here. Um, I don't charge for YouTube here. So I don't know how that works out. Uh, puts have been added. It's a breakout on the chart. Um, yeah, Pankaj is saying don't look at SGX. Uh, it's maintained. You say, I, I think so too because you shouldn't look at SGX. Here, if you're trading India, you will get data only at 3.30, right? <laughs> so... There's no point in looking at SGX now and saying that I say yoga, I say yoga. At 3.30 today, we didn't have SGX. So at 3.30 today, the reality is that there is nothing which could have told you to long the market. Maybe there were things which told you to um, exit the market, uh, exit the long, uh, exit the shorts. But uh, reality is at 3.30 today, looking at the option chain, there was nothing which is asking you to be, um, uh, sorry, to, to, to go long the market, right? Because of the uh, option chain. <clears throat> but largely everything looks bullish as of now when we are closing this analysis. Uh, Varun is asking, raise your hands who are still holding short here. I am also there, which is why I am going for bankruptcy lawyers. So, <clears throat> yeah, but I think today's gap has been a short to so many people. Uh, so Sagar is asking how do gap ups work from the point of view of orders that's because the first offer comes at a very high level right so that's the one, first thing which gets executed Sagar is also holding bank nifty short Sagar if you are in anywhere near Bangalore we should find a place to get drunk and drown our sorrows no it, it's not going to it's not looking good at all for any of us the you know, the bear club of JP Nagar South. <laughs> but anyway, this is how it is. It is how it is. Things happen. Mistakes happen. Let's see. Uh, Sharath is asking, will SGX be right most of the times? Uh, today, it is tricky for the simple reason that there is an event. And after FOMC event, anything can happen. So, so, so yeah, that's that. But anyway, there's nothing we can do over there. If tomorrow, if it opens up, we'll see what happens. If it consolidates, we know what to do. I mean, at some point, we have to get out of our shots. And, uh, you know, it's not like we can find a resistance at every level. That is not the right approach to trading. I think I am being accused of that. Probably you are right. <laughs> but, but like, the, the point is this, right? This channel stop has broken out. And the only thing which is separating which is giving any semblance of a resistance is this 200 DMA. And if it's 200 DMA breaks, then there's nothing which is stopping index from going up again. That is the reality of it, right? Uh, today, you could have bought calls at market close looking at the strong closing and the possibility that what if the DMA breaks, let's go, go, go. But, but that's something which we can't retrospectively, we can easily say in hindsight. But if you looked at the option chain today, you wouldn't have done this because there was so much resistance at 17,000 calls. So as of 2, 3.30 today, our analysis would have been, let's not long the market. If you have shorts, you can get out because this channel is broken according to chart and the 200 DMA is being tested right now, right? So, okay, that concludes our analysis for today. Tomorrow is a very interesting 
tricky uh, uh, expiry. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Uh, and this uh, nothing we can do looking at SGX or anything else today. We'll see uh, uh, the open tomorrow. We'll see what the uh, FOMC uh, interest rate decision holds for us. In any case, uh, most importantly, please don't rate it as advice or tips or anything. This is just market analysis. Uh, the most important thing is that we stay away from events that can damage our capital uh, so that we can keep our capital safe. Sagar is asking what happened to my April calls. I'm still holding them. I'm down some 20K on that. It's not uh, looking nice. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to be probably down more, <laughs> but we'll see. But at least I'm not short this week's expiry calls because that is going to uh, be a massive gamma play had I had that. So that's that. So anyway, that concludes our analysis for today. We'll see you again tomorrow or on Sunday because day after tomorrow is, a ho is holy. So there's no market on Friday. So we'll see you again on Sunday night analysis for Monday. Thanks so much guys for joining. Uh, uh, we'll, uh, I hope tomorrow turns out well for you, whether you're long or short or whichever it is. And on that note, I'll take your leave. Uh, please uh, trade safely and keep your capital safe. Bye.